This is our viral moment of the week. So, guys, I like my hair. It's starting to get back crunchy. You look like a boy. Oh, no, no, no. It look like, you look like Kamaya. You look like a handsome boy. Kamaya, oh, your hair never going to grow. It's going to stay like that. Yeah. I'm sorry for you. you you're just going to be like a boy forever. Liar. You hold me, Liar. Liar. I hear you. Could be a boy You should go to the barbershop to get it actually evened out. Is it on? Is it on, honey? Is this thing recorded? What's up to the lens all across the land? This is your girl T.S. Madison, honey, and I'm coming to you loud, live, and always and forever in color. Are you ready? I need for you to buckle your seatbelts, baby, because of this is about to be a bumpy ride. You are about to get turned out with T.S. Madison. Yes, yes, yes. baby the he's the she's the thems the they's and all the identities in between now in a world divided by varying beliefs opinions traditions and experiences i the ts am here to bridge the gap now get comfortable because we're serving laughs spilling tea and sharing he key honey <laughs> however it won't all be fun and games we will also be covering the hard-hitting issues that our society is faced with. Racial inequality, LGBTQ plus rights, and every other topic we ain't supposed to discuss at the dinner table, baby. But we do. Now, y'all know me. I'm going to give it to you raw and unfiltered with a whole lot of love and a whole lot of laughter. So stay tuned because I'm going to turn this up and turn this out. And trust, you ain't going to want to turn it off. But I'm not alone over here, y'all. My engineer, Nigerian Mo, and DJ Boogie Love are here with me. What's going on, Mo? What's up, Maddie? What's going on, DJ Boogie Love? What's new? What y'all did last night? Work. This did is work. You, did you smoke a joint last night? Actually, you know what? Uh-huh. You be late again, I'm a... I'm not late. I'm a fi 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 yo. Boogie Love, what happened to you last night, babe? Uh, I just worked out a little bit, you know. You getting strong for the TS? Gotta. Ooh, <laughs> look at those seps, son. I don't know if they bow or they seps. I don't know what it is, huh? You know, listen, there is pressing things that are going on in the public right now where people are asking the question, who should come first, your child or your spouse? And I'm, I'm saying this because there was a, a woman in the news who had uh, made a statement where she said if her husband and her son was on a cliff and she had to choose who she was going to save. She said, I'd save my husband because we could make another child. Dang. I banish her to the outer region, honey, because when she gets back with that husband, they ain't going to be able to make no more kids. I personally feel this right here. I personally feel that you should let the husband go on because he's lived his life. And, you know, you can get another man to give you, a, you know, give you another child. But that child needs to have the opportunity to live his life. But that's her and I, you know. What would you do in this situation, Mo? Because I know that your, your sack is filled with kids. <laughs> Honestly, I would most likely, I'm, I'm most likely may choose my wife, though. Because if, if you think about it, if you honestly, if you think about it, you say you can make kids with another person, but you don't want to just make kids with just anybody, though. 
number one. Number two, depending on your situation, you know, you might need your spouse at the end of the day. Boogie love. I'm saving my kid because I got to carry this child for nine months and it's a lifetime commitment. And then my spouse, but who knows? But isn't your spouse your lifetime commitment too? That, but we created but something listen, together. Just because you have a sack full of kids don't mean they swimming upwards, okay? Some of them in there laying dormant. In my situation, I would hope I would be able to save both of them. But if I had to choose, most likely I would choose my wife. Ladies, please make sure that Mo, when you ever get an opportunity to have a, an experience with Mo, you provide him with fellatio because you can keep his kids inside. <laughs> <laughs> let's, talk, let's talk like this. You know, we, we, we all have read the Bible and everything. What oh, does it say? See, no, this, what does it say? What does it say? It says a man should cling to his wife. The Bible does say forsake all others and cling to your mate. Okay. But here we all, right. we all messed up in society right now for following everything that that Bible say. We messed up. See, y'all over here going by the rules and regulations according to the book instead of the moral standards of let that go. He gone. Get the baby. The baby need a whole other life out here. Okay. I got you. I got all right. You. All right, y'all. Every week we open the show with a viral moment. Did you see that with the little boy? Was it a little boy? It was a little boy. Little boy reading. Was it with his? his, his I think it was his mom. His mom. Yeah. Child, listen. Let me tell you something about kids. Kids possess so much innocence and and stuff like that that you know you will never be able to fool them. Me as a trans woman walking through this life, I have found the three things that you will never fool: the children, <laughs> the Chinese people down into the nail shop. And dogs and cats. But kids are most definitely the most brutal. I kind of knew it was a girl. Oh, you knew? Yeah. You have those types of eyes? Well, no, I was I was looking at uh I was and looking her at her voice. Ha hair her voice and her and voice. Her and not only that, I was looking at how her hair was looking. I was like, oh yeah. Oh Mo, maybe it's that Nigerian innocence that you have going on over there. Can you tell everything that you see? What do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> Enough of all that, honey. <laughs> Let's move on to the hot topic. Mo and Boogie Love, what is going on in the news this week? Well, we have uh, Caitlyn Jenner in, back in the news today. She's talking about how uh, the woke world is ruining female sports. So what do you think about that? First of all, I just want to know, has Caitlyn Jenner taken care of those athletes' foot that she's had for this long, <laughs> long period of time? <laughs> I think that she likes those Walgreens stockings <laughs> and those, you know, those church biscuits and stuff like that, you know. And I think that she got stuck in that and then she really is not living her authentic uh, self as a, as a person of trans, you know, experience. Because if she looked at it from, the, from a trans person's eye, I think she'd have more compassion with things. Well, I don't want to participate in sports as it is, so that's not up my lane, honey. So what's next? I just want her to take care of those athletes' foot. So what we have is Machine Gun Kelly and Megan Fox have recently got engaged, and he took upon himself to design the ring, and it emulates a rose. So you know a rose has thorns, right? So if Megan Fox wants to take this ring off at any point, it's, the finger. it's gonna hurt. Listen, Aretha Franklin said a rose is still a rose, and baby girl, you still a flower, honey. And if Aretha said it, then it's law. I'm with Machine Gun Kelly. Keep her on clink clink. All right, honey. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, those are my thoughts, okay? So many. <laughs> so many, and Maddie Mom. I want to hear your thoughts on some of these hot topics, baby. Get down in the conversation that's in the live chat going on right now. You can also tweet at Turn Out with TS, and don't forget to use hashtag Turn Out. I want to hear from you. Let me tell you something, baby. You don't want to miss tonight's show. Singer, songwriter, and reality TV star Nibia is here, and she's answering all my burning questions, baby. Loving Hip Hop Reunions, Mimi Foss is here giving us the tea on being drama-free. We also have a special performance from my friend Victor Jackson. I'm telling you, baby, you don't want to go anywhere because we just get started, and we'll be back right after this. Yes, <laughs> 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 yo, 
Y'all, hush, hush. Welcome back to Turned Out with T.S. Madison on Fox Soul. When you first met my next guest, she was in the center of one of TV's most infamous love triangles. But these days, she's grown past the drama and has even sacrificed her claim to fame to keep it that way. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Love & Hip Hop's Mimi Faust. So, Mimi, you're turning 50. I am 50. Oh, you, you've just turned 50. I just turned 50. That is a huge milestone. So, what are you taking into this new chapter, and what are you leaving behind? I'm leaving behind all BS, mm. and I'm taking into this new chapter everything that is good, great, amazing. Um, my piece is priceless, and that's what I want to do moving forward. I have, I have anything negative, that's what I'm leaving behind. Girl, I'm 44, so that's six years for me. And I'm still going to be engaged in a little bit of mess because I like a little bit of mess. So. <laughs> <laughs> I like a little mess, but, you know, I ain't going to, you know, I'm going to leave some of it in my 44. But, you know, 50, I'm done with it, too. Listen, I, I'm in such a happy place in my life right now. I went to therapy, mm -hmm. and that's what got me together. Therapy? What? So what did you do in therapy? Like, what happened? Us as, as black people think ter therapy is so taboo. Therapy is necessary. Mm. Therapy is, therapy turned my life around. Because I honestly, I was proposed to in 2020 and I wasn't ready. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because we, we, we jumping all, all the way ahead. Now, you're engaged, so I want to say congratulations. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> Put that rock, let them folks see the rock out there. Godly, oh my God. So have you guys set a date? We haven't, we're working on everything. This literally just happened last week. I did see it on social media. It's a beautiful thing and I, I wasn't expecting this. I'm not like a very materialistic type girl. And then when I got it, I was, I was blown away. Like, damn. Girl. <laughs> So this is the second time you and Ty have been engaged. Yes. Girl, what happened the first time? I wasn't ready. I wasn't ready, like honestly. I was scared, I was terrified. I was like, I said yes in the moment because there were cameras and stuff around. And two days later I was like, ah, you know, I freaked out. But why are you so afraid of- uh, Commitment. Commitment, yes. It's my past. Uh, it's the traumas that you... Yes. We all know that you've had a very open relationship on television. Yes. And so I, I would, it wouldn't be right if I didn't ask you one question about it. I won't say any names. I'm an open book. Say it. So, so were you traumatized by the relationship that you and Stevie had? Very much so. Very much so. Um, Stevie was probably my biggest lesson in life. My biggest life lesson, he probably was that. So the greatest gift that came from you and Stevie's, Stevie's relationship was your baby. Absolutely. But you don't fool with him. I fool with him because, you know, I see the daddy. But, like, fool with him, fool with him, like, it's, it's tough because I don't trust him. I don't believe him. I don't believe what he says because I've been lied to and disrespected so, for so long. So it's hard for me to trust and believe anything that comes out of his mouth, anything that he says, anything. So right now, today, I'm just now starting to learn, because of therapy, mm -hmm. to trust him and what he says. So when you saw your therapist, you sat down in front of your therapist and you said, I mean me fast and I used to date Stevie J. <laughs> <laughs> and if you've watched Love and Hip Hop, honey, you've seen the things that this man has taken me through. It was way more than that. I, I had to start from six years old. Oh. That's where my therapy started. At six. Six is when my trauma started. So, six years old, you, you went back to that trauma. Yes. And you, you, you're talking it out with your therapist, and then you get all the way up here to the, to the Stevie thing or whatever, yes. and then she says, well, you know, you got to let it go. Was it hard for you to let go? Yes. I've been holding on to this my whole life. It was very hard for me to let go. This is, this, these are the reasons why I, my relationships always failed. This is the reasons why, you know, when, I, when someone did honestly and genuinely love me, I was terrified to commit because of my past and my traumas. So 
it was tough. Every time a woman comes here and she talks to me about there, because Tamar was here uh, last week and mm -hmm. she was talking about, uh, you know, her dealings with therapy and how it's so necessary for, you know, us African-American people to really deal with our traumas and stuff like that. Um, and I admitted to her, I said, girl, you know, I think that that's why a lot of my relationships and business ships and things have been uh, in such turmoil because there's so many things that I haven't touched on mm -hmm. and, and, and really dealt with, you know, in, in my past that, have, that, have, that has traumatized me that I'm afraid to go forth and talk to somebody about and because and, I don't want them judging me. But then I have to get in the space in my mind like, girl, in order for you to really move forward, you, you do have to let your guard down and be very open and honest with what you've been through. You have to. If you don't, you're always going to be stuck in that place. And I was scared for a long time because of the things that I've done and went through, and I didn't want to do it either. But I got to a place where I was so broken down, I just didn't have a choice. I was in a bad place. And in order for me, and, and, I, and I still have a child that I have to raise. I still got to be a good mom to her. I still got to give her the tools and the gems that she needs because I'm not always going to be here. I had her later in life. I got to give her these gems now. Right. So she's equipped to deal because this world is nasty. It is very nasty. Very nasty. And I learned that the world was very nasty. Very, very, very early. Very nasty. I'm very happy that you, you know, you're in this space and you, you found a, a person that, that loves you and, and you said yes to. But I want to know <laughs> a woman. This is totally different for you what what is it what is this like like you know being being because i'm i'm a, a heterosexual transsexual yeah add it up girl it's add it up <laughs> um okay you know <laughs> meaning that i've only been attracted to you know men like my the entirety of my life i've never had a bisexual moment where i've been you know open to i've had experience I, an, almost an experience that I'll elaborate about later on somewhere, <laughs> but I've never been attracted to anything other than a man. And so, when did were you always bisexual? No, I dealt with men my entire life up until about nine years ago. My entire life was never attracted to women, never anything like that. So, so, so let's fast forward here. Can we expect like a wedding special on TV? I don't really even care about TV, but we're gonna have a, a wedding. Whether it's gonna be on TV or not is, I don't even care about that. We're gonna, ha we're gonna have our toes in somebody's sand somewhere. It's a destination wedding. We know that, we don't know where yet, but yes ma'am. So how has this relationship uh, changed your relationship with the Love & Hip Hop franchise? It's different because, you know, they're used to seeing what they're used to seeing. So then when I popped up with a female, they were like, what? You know, everybody was, oh, my God. And you know, it was different. It was tough. Can I be honest? Yes. At first, I didn't think it was real. I thought it was I thought it was for, for TV. TV. I did. I'm being, for, as a consumer, I thought it was. I was like, girl, she doing that for the ratings for and all this stuff, for a storyline. But this is real. Like, I see that it's real because the way you light up when you talk about Ty and that when you when you show that rock and <laughs> the way that you dismiss Nico and Stevie. All, oh, look, look, look. You see? Look how the, look how the, the whole the whole aura just changed. The way it was just very just like, girl, I ain't got nothing to do with any of that. And I love this for you, Mimi. I do. Like maybe one day, maybe one day I can absorb some of this, and I might need to have a same-sex relationship. <laughs> Wait a minute, I already do. <laughs> so, do you have any new projects coming up? I do. Uh, my life coach and I are working on a project called Peace is Priceless, and we're going to do podcasts, and we're going to every week um, or podcast will be a different topic or subject regarding anything that brings people peace in their life. Financial peace, mm. um, let's say it's uh, relationships, anything that you might have, weight gain, loss, whatever it might be. And then at the end of it, we're gonna have an expert that deals with that particular subject for the callers to get help on whatever they need for the particular thing that we are speaking about 
that week. Oh, where do I sign up for that? I need that, girl. <laughs> Peace is priceless and there's nothing out there like it. We're going to touch on every aspect you can think of. Oh, I'm ready for that, and child. Gonna, and going to help whoever is tuning in with whatever situation it is, if they want it. Okay, all right. Well, listen, when we come back, we're going to get down in my DMs, honey. Don't you go anywhere, because this is going to get hot. Welcome back, welcome back to Turned Out with T.S. Madison on Fox Soul. We are here with my girl Mimi Faust, honey. Mimi, thank you so much for being here. Like, I learned so much about you in that little short period of time. But I don't let everybody get down in my DMs, girl. Okay. But, you know, since you got this love and light, I want you to help me unpack what's going on in my DMs. Because I get all kinds of messages from all kinds of strangers and men and women and lentil men. You know, the things in between. And I want you to help me unpack that. Okay. So what we're about to do, ladies and gentlemen, is get down in the DMs. Yeah. All right, here's the first DM. What's going on, Madison? I'm glad to see you're taking DMs because I have a situation that I haven't been able to talk with others about. I'm a 28-year-old woman living in Biloxi where I teach first grade. After class some days, I visit this bar, like Miss Funky Dineva says, where the Honda cars be. Since going, I've met another friend and we've always had a great time. For about a month now, we've been meeting up and spending more time together. I've slowly started to develop feelings for them, but the only problem is she's a woman as well. I've never had this type of experience before. What should I do? Explore it. So your first time when you developed feelings to see what you just went right on in? And no, I didn't. I was very skeptical. I was. I was skeptical. But the more I hung around my gay friends and the more we had a good time, it just, I just kind of like eased my way into the situation. <laughs> For lack of a better term, eased. Eased. Ooh. <laughs> that part. How was it your first time? It was good. <laughs> So we tell this person out there in the DM, honey, don't hold back. Get down there, honey, and do the damn thing. If you have feelings and emotions for this person, go ahead on and give it a try. Hell, don't knock it until you try. All right. See, try it. If it don't work for you, then leave it or alone. Or try it again, you know? It, you know, it's okay. Right? Just try. If at first you don't succeed, ooh, dust your box off and try again. <laughs> <laughs> I dust the box off. Dust the box off. All right, let's okay, go to the right. next DM. Okay. You got your own show. You cute now, huh? Girl, I need your help. Me and my man have been together for about three years, and we are very happy. We have a very open and connected relationship with no judgment on either part. Hmm. Both of us are freaky. As so oftentimes we film our encounters. Now, because we're saving for a home, we're considering taking these videos and starting an OnlyFans. The only issue is we disagree on whether we should show our faces or not. What do you think, sis? Well, wait a minute now. You asked me this when I was the queen of El Noheen and all the things in between, girl. Okay. All right. Okay. I want to hear what you have to say. I'm a, I'm a retired stripper. Okay. And, uh, you know, that's not my ministry anymore. However, if this is something that they're doing to make money, mm -hmm. you know, I wouldn't be opposed to that. And, but this is something that it seems like that they, that they want to do. Wait a minute, Mimi. Hold on. Oh, God. You've had some experience in the video vixen situation. I have. For me, big mistake. Oh. Big, big, big mistake. Huge. Oh. On every level. For me. Boy, it, it was huge. I did see it. <laughs> huge mistake. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, for, for me, everybody's different. If that's what they're into and they, they like voyeurism and all that, I mean, it, it, and they both agree on it, sure, it, 
See what it do for you. For me? Now, girl, you know you had ran, you you and someone else had ran the stock up over there at Bed Bath & Beyond, honey. They couldn't keep a shower rod in the store nowhere in the United States of America. Shower rods were selling out all over the country. Can I, can I sidebar real quick? Yes. So let me tell you how that even came, the sh whole shower rod thing came about. After, can I just get into it? Go ahead. This is what we do down in the DMs. We get into I'm gonna get into it. So he shopped, he said to me, can I shop this around? Initially he came to me and said, can I, can he tape us? You know, what we do is art, it's like art. Eh. Can I tape us? I was like, okay, I've never done that. I never even taped myself with Stevie, who I had been with for years, right? Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, cool. So then he said, can I, you know, can I just see what it do, whatever, it was so good, da, da, da. The moment I said yes, and I didn't know what that entailed, was the worst moment of my life. Because when I said yes, you can see what it do, with the tape, he went ham. I mean, it was on underground sites. It, yeah, it was, was. It was everywhere. I heard you guys got a, 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 a offer from uh, Pornhub for a million dollars. It was everywhere, okay? We ended up, Vivid ended up giving me a call a few days later mm -hmm. and saying, um, you might wanna come have a meeting with us. So I'm like, I don't know. My job clueless to this. I don't know what's going on. I don't know anything about this world. I just told my boyfriend, yes, see what you can do. Big mistake. Once I got to the office with the Vivid people, they were like, this tape is everywhere. It's everywhere. He has shopped it everywhere. He said, it's on, he said, we can regulate this tape if you, if you would like us to. If not, this tape will just be out there and you get nothing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Or you can sign with us and at least get paid for it. Okay. So I'm sitting there and I had to make a decision in that moment. Do I want to let this be out there for, for nothing? For free, right. For free, because he done put it out there. Or do I want it to be out there and get compensated for it? Okay. So I agreed to sign with them. Mm. They, after they explained that they've been in business for all these years, they're number one. You had never known about Vivid. Never. Clueless. I don't even watch porn. I don't even watch porn. Let's start there. Okay? I mean, hit with all types of daggers and stuff like that at one time, and I'm like, I'm overwhelmed trying to make a decision about my life in this moment about a serious decision. I said, okay. What I didn't know was... And that office, when I said okay and signed with them, they said, well, we don't have our money shot. They put us in an Uber and sent us to a hotel to get the money shot. I don't know if anyone has ever seen the tape, but there's where you can tell it's just me and him and some, some real home, and then there's one that looks real, not like a home tape. They sent a camera, person in to get the money shot okay so after so i can't i don't i can't perform I, i've never done this on camera so it just it was terrible so after hours and hours and of trying to get the money shot i'm like i need to take a shower i'm high I, this is too much of the higher uh -huh. like i went to go take a shower <laughs> As I went in there, he came in after me and the shower scene happened and the camera person followed us in the bathroom. That's where the whole shower rod thing came from. So the shower, the shower rod scene was just out the blue. Out the blue, cause I was over it and done. At that point I was like, I don't care what y'all got. I'm, I'm done with this. I'm over it. I'm going to just, I'm done. So the burning question for me in this situation is, did you get the money, the shot? Absolutely. I get, I'm going to get paid for the rest of my life. Hi, y'all. I'm on shot time. So, you know, <laughs> rest of my life. Listen, anybody that's in a hotel that pulls it up, anybody that's, that can, 
whenever you pull it up and you watch it, unless it's on a little snippet of... On a tube side? Yeah. I get paid. Oh, I know exactly how that works. This is why I make residual coins for the rest of my life as well. Then I say, when I die, when I'm dead and gone, if somebody want to watch it... it Your daughter get it. Mm -hmm. That's how it works. Hello. That's how it works for a smart individual. Hello. I've always been a smart lady. Mm -hmm. And so being that we're both smart ladies, we'll just tell this couple out here, honey, do what you need to do, but make sure you make your money off of it, honey. And make sure that it's lucrative now and after you're gone. That part. Yeah. All right, let's go to this last DM. Hey, Madison, I need your help. I'm a professional chef, and I've been working for one family for the last five years. During this time, I've built an amazing relationship with the kids and the wife. But I've also grown closer to the husband as well, spending intimate time learning his likes and dislikes and making his food has pushed us into more intimate relationship. Any small moment that we can grab just between us, we act on it. No. But I'm getting tired of those small moments and I would like more. What should I do? Absolutely not. If you are a professional individual and you are working for the family and you have a relationship with this family, wife, kids, sever your ties with this husband. Do not move forward. Absolutely stop. Stop it now. What? Listen, I've told people on, on many, many occasions, the karmatic energy that's going to come for him, you don't want to have anything to do with that. Hello. Whatever karma comes around, I told people last year, I'm not having nobody's husband, knowingly. All that stuff is karma. Yes. And when it comes back. It's terrible. Oh, and I don't want to be, let the walls fall out on him and honey, let me be safe. More so than that, you're going to lose your job if this gets out. You're going to have a bad reputation if this gets out. It's just bad across the board. It's bad across the board. Yeah. He's not leaving his wife for you. Ever. Chef. Oh. He's not leaving his wife or kids for you. Maid. <laughs> Just stop now. Stop now. Find your own man and, and uh, exit stage left with this situation. Oh, yes. I see you looking. Don't you go nowhere. We'll be right back. <laughs> to Turned Out with T.S. Madison on Fox Soul. <laughs> My next guest is definitely not new to this and absolutely true to this. A singer and most recently one of the stars of BET's Encore. Give it up for Nivea! Thank you for having me. Yes, welcome Nivea, welcome, welcome, Thank welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for sitting with me today. First of all, congrats on your new single, Vagina. Oh, wait, wait. A <laughs> oh, oh my lamb. Congrats on your new Thank single, you. Virginia. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yes, I'm finally back with some new music. And I'm um, excited about it. It's been a long time coming, but um, I have an album I'm working on. Oh, so you are working on yeah, an album. Yeah, so it will be a full album. Oh. But we're just going to, you know, this was the first single off the project, Virginia. What, what, what made you name it Virginia? Because when I first looked at it, I was like, girl, what? <laughs> Is it close to Yeah, people was like, what part of Virginia? What you talking I didn't know you was from here, girl. First of all, I'm Atlanta, ATL. Poet, girl, what well, The song is talking about basically you fell in love with somebody that kind of accidentally, and then it's like a third party situation. Like, I'm the other chick, and then oh. I'm like, or one of them. Oh. And um, so the hook says, I promise, I told you I would wait for you, stick it out, keep it on the low. And then he moves to Virginia, and that's where I go to see him, but it's just back and forth. So towards the end of the record, you hear me saying, if you really want me, you need to make a choice. It's like a love gone, uh, a love loss, basically. So it was basically like a love triangle. Right. Oh, and uh -huh. you were, you were, you were, uh, what, did, what did Aretha say? Aretha said, uh, <laughs> the change, change, change. Change, change, change. Oh. That ain't a fool. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Last year, you starred on BET's Encore, but left mid-season. I've honestly been uh, running from reality TV from ye for years now. I've gotten offers from several shows, and I would just decline because my mouth is reckless. It was just a lot of uh, picking on, and you know, it was kind of funny to me at first, but once you see spirits being crushed and the girls' feelings was getting hurt and nothing was getting solved. It was still like, you're whack and, oh, why would you say that about me? It was too much back and forth for me. And I don't do that when I get upset. I don't have words, exactly. So I'm like, was trying to break up the fighting and it just was no solving that. So I was like, I didn't come in for this. I could have been on some show fighting by now if this is what I came to do. I did something different. Women empowerment, we were doing, um, all of us were singers, you know, I thought it was something different to try in my career. Oh, what y'all didn't see though. <laughs> Child, after I was like getting upset with the um, twins and Keely and I'm storming out of the house, <laughs> I did the typical thing. You know, I, when you, the cameras fall, you're like, get those cameras off me. Get, I did <laughs> First of all, we lived together for real for 30 days in a house. We couldn't see anybody. No one could come visit us. It was super duper quarantine. And so I was stressed out about that because I'm not used to being living with, first of all, I'm not a female type chick. Like I'm like all that bickering and all that <laughs> girl. <laughs> <laughs> what a penis at? So I'm like flirting with the cameraman. They walk, they be standing like right there. So I'm like, hey, they like, Nivia, we're shooting, you can't talk. I'm like, I'm just weird, he right here. I can't say, hey, they couldn't talk to us. The whole thing was just a really new and awkward um, thing for me, but I wanted to try something different. I did um, enjoy some of the time there. <laughs> it wasn't all bad. So my question to you is, if you have the opportunity to do it again. I don't think I would, not in that situation. I think it would have to be, no, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I would not. Even if you have the opportunity to produce it yourself. And now like that's a different, that's different. I don't necessarily want to be in a group though. It was something I was willing to try and I thought it was a cool um, idea, but I know I like being a solo artist. I would like to be in a, like a star my own band. Um, I was always wanted to alter like, artist thing, but I think all artists want to do that. But I don't see myself in a female group. I think, yeah. So Nivia, uh, to be honest with you, I really want to go off the grid just a little bit. Okay. Now, I know that you've worked with R. Kelly. Okay, Robert. Robert, <laughs> Robert. Yes. So you've seen all of this stuff that's going on in his career and his life. So unfortunate. And all what are you, as a as formerly working with him, like how do you feel about this, like watching this stuff go on and... I mean, it's been so much revealed, I guess you could say. Um, I don't know, I think it's been quite, it's just been sad to me, honestly. Like so many young women, like, wow. Do you believe them? I don't believe that as a woman I would blast something like that that included me that was not true. Well, um, yeah, I don't think that, that they would lie about that, no. I tell my kids and I've told other um, people I've mentored and that want to be in music that sometimes that artist you meet is nothing like the music you fell in love with that they created. And if you think that that's the same or you know that person through their music, you'll be sadly disappointed when you meet some, sometimes you'll meet somebody and you're like, oh, she was nothing like what I was. That's because you basing it off of their videos or these songs, which is just a piece of them, their art that they're sharing with you. That's not that person though. Do you, do you still listen to his music at all? I don't, I, I'm just gonna be honest. I was not really, I wasn't an R. Kelly fan of, but I was um, indirectly, cause he wrote a lot of Aaliyah's music in her early, in her beginning of career. And I was a huge, am a huge fan of Aaliyah. Also he has a lot of R. Kelly's early music has a lot of like Aaron Hall, the guy sound a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I love me some Aaron Hall, so. <laughs> but other than that, I've never really been into his music. My sister, um, one of my older sisters, she was 
super duper R. Kelly fan. And um, she was like, he's so lucky when I got to, when we did music together. But I was never a really big R. Kelly fan. You was like, come on, let me get this check. Okay, I wasn't what, what we like, doing? I was honestly honored because he is a great songwriter. He is a legend. And he actually heard a song that I wrote on um, my first album. He was like, oh, I like her writing style. And he was impressed, and that's why he wanted to work with me. So I was like, oh, shoot. <laughs> she got some skin. <laughs> so um, I was honored in that way. It wasn't like, and also, I don't know, I'm sure labels still do this, but my label at the time, Jive Records, were, was really big on letting other artists work with the other artists on the label. And so we were label mates. So they was like, okay, we want to get um, R. Kelly to do some records for you. And he was like, I definitely want to work with her. I love this song, this song. And he got on it, and I do not like what he did on it, but whatever. Oh, it was a really bad rap, but <laughs> in any event, he gave me a classic record. So I hear his voice when I hear Laundromat. Laundromat was a brilliant concept. It's a beautiful record. And I went on to do another song for his album. I don't know which one it was, but it was called Touching. And um, that's really it. I really didn't have a lot of uh, extensive time with him or, you know. How many children do you have? Shall I have a villain? <laughs> What is your relationship like with their father? I don't mind. <laughs> Good my people, so no. I must say, even though she's single as they ain't got no man right now, but I must say God blessed me with them in my life that when we were together, we really were in love. We really did love each other, and our children were made out of love, like intentional and everything. So, and um, we're really good friends. We talk. Um, I talk to them differently, <laughs> but yeah, we're very close. We talk uh, about everything in regards to how we want to raise our children, and it's not always been smooth sailing. But I have had it a whole hell of a lot easier than a lot of women, or a lot of people, period, that co-parent that I've ever known. I'm very um, fortunate. Yeah, they, don't, they don't call you on the phone for no, for no <laughs> well, sneaky Well, one of my ex-husband is married. That don't mean you they don't call you to be a sneaky <laughs> leg, girl. No, <laughs> no, I love his wife too, by the way, but um, she's a wonderful mother and stepmother to my children. I wouldn't trade her for the world. But no, um, uh, <laughs> if they did, I wouldn't tell y'all. <laughs> All right, y'all, don't go nowhere because we're not done yet. When we come back, we're going to have a little fun with Nivea and our song association game. See you after this. Back to Turned Out with T.S. Madison on Fox Soul. Yes, turned out. Now, Nivea, you can't tell by looking at you, girl, but you've been in this thing for over 20 years. Oh, my lambs, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, Lord, please keep the face. Uh, <laughs> so, you know, that means that you have over 20 years worth of lyrics hidden and tucked away in that brain of yours. That is very true, actually. <laughs> so we're going to test, though, that brain and those oh. skills today, honey. We're going to take you down memory lane with a game that I like to call Remember Those Lyrics. Oh, OK. Remember Those Lyrics. Here's how the game goes. Okay. I'm going to read you the lyrics to a few of your songs from back in the day. Oh, my way. And it's your job to sing the next line. OK. <laughs> Are you ready? I'm ready, I think. Y'all give Nivea a round of applause and amp her up. <laughs> now, you got to sing these lyrics. Oh, uh, mm -hmm. okay. OK. I'm not going to sing it. I'm just going to read it to you, and then you sing the rest. OK. Feeling good, feeling great. You look good, but don't hate. <laughs> All my girls with your hair fixed and your nails done, put your hands up and say, OK. Okay, 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 yeah, you got a drink, get another one, make them pay for it, put it in the air and say, okay, 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 okay
Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, that was good, y'all. That was good. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Here's the next one. What party song? Get on the floor. The <laughs> <laughs> been so long since oh. the heat's been on. Uh -huh. So please show me what it is that you want to see. I said danger. Ow. Danger. <laughs> yes, I did. that was the intro. That was my introduction to the world. That was it. That was my first video. I was nervous as hell. <laughs> but my manager at the time did make sure because it's a lot of bad females in that video, right? And since I was still young, he was like, if you'll notice now when you go back and watch, I'm never in a scene with any of the other girls. That's why some girls, some people thought I was the girl on the bike, the girl with the snake. I'm like, no, I'm literally, when you see me, that was just me. We on the stage and I'm in the desert. Here's the next one. Yeah, you mocking me. Get your little record deal. <laughs> you think you all that? Baki, Nivea. <laughs> <laughs> Use a lion, cheating son of a, the way you do me. Boy, I'm tired of taking your I know all about those fast up in college. Shawty, need to stop it. Hello. Yeah! <laughs> Baby! Oh, 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 my God. Here we go, here we go. I'm going to be the one to bring it to you. Got my girls, got my man. So find your own and leave mine alone. Don't mess with my man. <laughs> I will be the one to bring it to you, yeah. Here's a little advice for you. Find your own man. Yeah! <laughs> Here's the last one. Okay. I'm at a low place. Damn, I'm tired of hopping. Um, hello, Virginia. Guess this is home. I could surrender. But I won't embrace a mellow place. Damn, I'm tired of hoping. Hello, Virginia. You looking good. I still remember I told you I would. I told you I would wait for you. Stick it out, keep it on the low. Glue you in the frame and then I put you up for show in Virginia. In Virginia. Oh, in Virginia. Come on, Virginia! <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, that was so good. Please stay tuned, okay? Give Nivea a round of applause. See you when we come back. Now listen, our next guest is a force to be reckoned with. He's truly carving his own path in music, and I am so excited to see him perform his single, Groovin', right here on Turnt Out with T.S. Madison on Fox Soul. Ladies and gentlemen, give it up for Victor Jackson! <laughs> Away. Two step, turn around, drop it down for me. Back 
Take it up, left and right, smooth it out for me You the one that I want and I need for me You can have it all, baby, trust me Our show, and we hope you tune in with us next week to Turned Out with T.S. Madison on Fox Soul. But before you go, please get down in the comment section immediately and tweet with us hashtag Turned Out on Fox Soul, honey. Hashtag Turned Out with T.S. Madison on Fox Soul. That's Soulmates and Maddie Mob. Get to work. We'll see you next week. Bye. Woo!